electricity will never be the same, but in a good way. With this month's update, there are lots of changes coming to electricity. Not only will I tell you every one of them, but also provide you with the most important circuits you need to know about for the next while. Starting off, we have some much needed and well appreciated quality of life changes. The naming scheme of many components got unified, for example all power supplying inputs are now just called power. In the same way, the applied power will now show up correctly on the memory cell outputs. Right clicking while wiring will clear the current wire, even when looking at another I.O. component. And the best quality of life feature is of course the entity snapping. When placing down a new component, simply press left shift while doing so and it will automatically align itself with the closest one. You can snap to the top, bottom and sides. Splitters no longer waste power and the remaining power will be given to the earliest output. So 4 power will supply 2 to the first and 1 to the others. Random switches will pass through power in the on instead of the off state, saving many electricians quite the headache. If you want to use the outputs from a conveyor, now you need to supply one more power. And the I.O. handles from the siren lights are easier to reach, because to use the words of the devs, they were an absolute pain to aim for, and I couldn't agree more. There are lots more changes to go through, so let's do a quick round. Storage monitors will now show where they will be deployed. Laser detectors now can be placed on any surface angle. Timers will be adjustable even when no power is supplied. Siren and flasher lights have been fixed to show the lights on their models. The counter can now go as high as 999 instead of 100. Ceiling lights will now need 2 power. The microphone stand description got updated. Weapon racks are no longer deployable underwater. And the I.O. ports of the door controller have been reversed. And more changes might be coming to it soon. Speaking of which, there are many changes in the works and I'll keep you updated on those, so you better subscribe. The developers have been communicating very well, Flavian in particular, so shout out to him. Members of the Rustricity Workshop could even suggest their own changes. Just like the next one, that was actually suggested by myself and not even 5 hours later it was in the game. When the lower input of a reactive target is powered, it will not reset automatically anymore. Which was very confusing beforehand. Lowering the target manually will also no longer send out the target hit out. And when both inputs are powered, the one with the higher power will be forwarded. Finally, this is the biggest alteration. Back two years ago, the XORN memory cell had zero power consumption, but they took this away from us. But now, most electrical components will not consume power anymore. In detail, AND, OR, XOR, memory cell, timer, blocker, random switch, counter, button, switch, smart switch, branch, and splitter all consume zero power. What a splendid change! Going hand in hand with this are the changes to battery drain. For example, the left output of the branch used to constantly drain its value from a battery, but now it's depending on what components are connected to it. Similar, the memory cell only drains from the site currently active. Or X or N switches will only drain power from the site that the power is going through and not both sides anymore. The drain on the auxiliary ports of all of these components got fixed and on top more special components like the fog machine, strobe light, spooky speaker as well as the industrial crafter got the drain adjusted accordingly. These changes to consumption and drain should allow players to make more complicated circuits with less power. This obviously changed some existing circuits. 
here are the most important ones you need to know about. The easiest circuit where you can see the changes in action is turrets. Beforehand one large battery would supply 9 turrets with power, but now branches and splitters don't consume power, meaning you can use all 100 rust watts to power a total of 10 turrets. Speaking of turrets, unfortunately the turret backup video I made previously isn't working anymore. But the fix is super simple. Once you did the circuit from the video, you only need to put a component with a consumption of 1 between the backup branch and the first backup turret like this. If you have them, you can use the industrial lights for the added benefit, but door controllers work just as well. Combining signals with an output power of 1, like the HES target on the turret, was in the past a tedious task. You either used AND OR switches or the so-called blocker chain, but since the OR switch doesn't consume power anymore, you can simply create an OR tree to combine signals effectively. This could be used to combine signals from turrets, SAM sites, multiple heartbeat sensors or conveyors. One famous example in the past was the zero power destruction detection. Now it is back. To detect if a wall was destroyed, you simply put down a component like a blocker on every critical wall you want to have checked. Apply a current of power 1 to the first, connect every wall on the way and wire the last output into the side of a blocker. This blocker then goes into a smart alarm. Now if a wall gets destroyed, the connection is lost and the alarm will trigger. All of this might just be the beginning, as players are making more suggestions by the day. What changes would you like to see? Leave them down below and hit like and subscribe along the way. If you want to see what's possible with electricity if pushed to the limit, then you should watch this video. And I see you in the next one. Splendid.